words. In this um, second part of this um, practical, we have T and E. We're going to be looking at granite seed and um, maize grain, both of them. Uh, let's start with granite. See, specifically, say either it is rye or fried. Because I will be using fried as the type of granite seed I'm using. Let me start with the. Let me start with um, the type of seed. This one is not a fruit, it's a seed. The grain that is a seed, the walls are not like the perical walls of fruits. So the seed walls are the testers, the fused perical and testers. That is what forms the fruit cell. Sorry, the seed walls. Okay. And um, for granules, granules can the seed can split into two, into two. So granules is a type of a dicot, a dicot plant, dicot. That is two seeded, two seeded uh, plant, two seeded plant. Examiner is going to ask questions um, as follows. Questions that will be coming up. Uh, trying to prep this examiner. I want to ask you the food class of specimen D. Yes, food class is that specimen D belongs to a food class called fats. Fats and oils. Fats and oils. And then to confirm that specimen D is fat and oil, you're going to smell that's granite seed fry. Smell. Smell means it you use your hand to see if you can squeeze it on a paper, fitter paper. Squeeze it. And if you squeeze it, you're going to see a translucent mark on the paper. That translucent mark on the paper confirms the presence of fat and then oils. You're going to do this test. Very, very optimistic that this test will be fried. So they say that this one will be fried or, dry or dried. So that means if this is fried or dried, when you smell it on the paper, you're going to see some kind of mark, a translucent and open mark on the paper, confirming that the food contains fat and oil. If you try that with tomato fruits or mango fruit, if you smell a tomato fruit on a paper or filter paper, you're not going to see any translucent or open mark on it. To show that there is absence of fat and oil in specimen A, so specimen B, as it was specimen D. Will show you a positive test if you carry out that test. Okay, the seed type or can sort out or classify this granite as a legume. Yes, it's a leguminous plant. Legume, legume, it's a legume. It's a legume. Okay, and it can be dispersed. Mode of it is passer is an explosive mechanism. Okay, you see it's a dry pot. And split and the seeds are well dispersed. That's what cannot see. Um, you must know that as a leguminous plant, it is non endospermous seed. It doesn't have endosperm, endosperm, just like maize grain. The whole of these parts of it, in fact, the, the, the most surface area of this seed is endosperm. Such is absent in granules. So, granule seed is a non endospermous seed. Non endospermous. Granule seed is a non endospermous seed. It doesn't have endosperm for storage. For storage. So, that is what it is. And if seeds can split into two. So you can say, first of all, they say classify this specimen D into kingdom, division, and class. Okay, the kingdom to which this granola belongs is plant here. It belongs to the division of a spermatophyta. And the class is dicotyledon. I repeat it again. It belongs to this kingdom. Kingdom is plant here. Kingdom is plant here. Kingdom is plant here. Division is spermatophyta, and then class 
is dicotylium. Dicotylium. Dicotylium is the part split into two halves. So that's what it is. That's what it is. So, but we're going to be looking at the possibility of differentiating specimen G as specimen E, as well as their similarities. That one will be coming up shortly. So, we go to maize grain. Quickly, this is the structure of a longitudinous part or section of a maize fruit. Look at it. Now, say that the, a, supposing that you are, you are putting up this diagram, you must have a three layer zemos. For example, now we'll be looking at to see these three layers. Okay? The first layer must be a tester, three spherical. The second layer must be a tegmen. A tegmen. And then the inner layer must be an endosperm. The whole of this part is the endosperm. Okay, some small portion of the endosperm is being shared. Just small portion is being shared with the cut layer on the seed. So you can see a seed just lying in a small portion in the endosperm. So a maize is just an endosperm. Another name for maize is endosperm. As I said, the seed is purely endospermous. It's purely endospermous, unlike the maize. And it is a monocot plant. A monocot meaning that the seed is not allowed to be split into two equal parts. It's not possible. Then if you look at another interesting part of this area, then I want to know these two things here. The plural and the radical. The plumbum and radical, that is the, the, the plumbum will turn into a new shoot. Radical will turn into a new root. Okay. But when they are still young, they are called plumbum. Okay. The plumbum there must be a sheet that protects the, the young, the young maize plant when it's growing. That is the plumbum sheet of coleta. Coleta or plumbum sheet protect the young shoots or plumbum. And then, the radical has the new sh the new roots. What protects the radical that is the new root is the radical sheet or coleosa protects the radical. And then you have the point of attachment of the core. That is the base part of it. Uh, looking at this uh, specimen E, critically you find that in terms of structural observ observ um, structural observation, observing features of this. This is endospermous. You see this endospermous, and you get this triangle in shape. Okay, you can also see that there is a tester, there's a pericard, a tester, there's an endosperm, there's a tegmen, there's a cotyledon. Cotyledon occupy um, the, the ratio of cotyledon here is just one is to three, just one top of the whole seed shape. Is being occupied by the cotyledon. Inside the cotyledon, you have the plumbum and the radical. The plumbum is being protected by the plumbum sheets, the radical is being protected by radical sheets. And that is the structure. And the whole of this place is where the food is done. Another question in the mind of examiner now will be this seed is what that plant is. Yes, we classify this plant as a cereal. This is cereal. This seed is cereal. Cereal. Just like granite is beginning. This is cereal. Cereal. Cereal plants. Other cereal plants apart from maize can be millet. It can be rice. Okay. Other example of legume that is granite seed could be beans. Could be melon. Can also have a mokona. Mokona puree or velvet beans. These are so maize is a cereal, a cereal, a cereal. Okay. Looking at the differences now. Okay, now before I go to the differences now, what food class does this contain? The food class here is on carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. What's the function of this food class? The function is that it provides it's an energy giving food, just like granite seed is part of oil. Part of oil is also very important because. It helps storage of fat helps to regulate body temperature. That's another thing. So if I want to test this grain for whether it contains oil, like I will try to smell on a paper, you will not see any transmission, that means part of oil there is absent. But if I have a very part of this soap in water, 
on artery drop of iodine, you're going to see a blue black coloration or a dark, a dark blue coloration appearing on the part of the green where iodine reacted. So that's to say that this specimen E contains carbohydrates, which is starch. You try that iodine with this, you cannot see it. It's not going to show any visible reaction. So that means that there is absence of starch in the granite C. Okay, uh, looking at the differences between specimen D and specimen E. Do that shortly now. Specimen D and specimen E. Every differences must be tabulated. So it's going to be in the tabular form. Differences uh, between D and E, like I said earlier, should be tabulated. It's called. We are not see the specimen D, maize grain is specimen E. So in that kidney shape, is the shape of granite seed, and then triangular shapes for maize. Um, granite is not in the spamous fruits. Maize is in the spamous fruits. And the um, granite radical is short and swollen. Radical here is, is large and being protected by collector uh, radical sheets. In um, granite, since there is no endosperm, cotyledon are large and fleshy. Maize, cotyledon, demarcates the endospines from the embryo. So, I mean, what demarcates the embryo from the seed? Uh, what demarcates the, the embryo from the endosperm and cotyledon? The seed is the cotyledon. So, cotyledon act as a demar demarcate, act as a barrier between the seed and the embryo. So these are the differences. Another difference that can come in here that can make it five is the number of seed. This is two seeded. This is one seeded. Two seeded. Two seeded. And then here, one seeded. So there are three structural differences between granuts and uh, maize green. Okay. We'll shortly look at specimen F, G, and F. Shortly.